Hello guys, it is the Mr. Meowner, and here I have episode 4 of my UMass Dynasty, and so it will be a week 3 matchup as the UMass Minutemen try to pull off an upset off the number 12 ranked San Jose State uh, Spartans, and it will be in San Jose. And as you see here in the background, Christian Burt got the MAC Defensive Player of the Week with his two interception game last week versus Indiana. And so other than this, here in the background, you see that Andy Montoya uh, will be offered him a scholarship, and he accepted the scholarship. Here is 71 overall. Kevin Wright has us on top of his board, and that would be great if we could land him. And so other than that, this is just some recruiting off in the background. And so before the, or just to let you guys know, this week four is also going to be this episode because I kind of messed, because I somehow I lost the gameplay on week four. Well, I was trying to make space for the gameplay and. I accidentally deleted the wrong thing and so I lost all I tried to delete the rest of the gameplay for this episode right here and said to delete the gameplay for week 4 but I still have like the end of it and so that will be on at the end of the episode but other than that while the game is loading I'm just going to take a deep breath and go to a play by play mode Alright, hello guys, it is Meowers from Meow Sports Network, and so here we are off in San Jose, California, as we have a matchup between the 12th ranked San Jose State Spartans and the UMass Minutemen. And the UMass Minutemen here are in this match, trying to pull off an upset, and they are very... They're very big underdogs in this matchup. And so here, San Jose State will be running out of the tunnels, getting led by David Fales, a star quarterback, who's a local boy from San Rafael. As Mike Wegson will just try to keep up with him. And so here, as you see, the Spartans are coming out of the tunnel. And so as we let the Three game festivities finish. We'll show we'll show some week two highlights. As here in midway second quarter to defensive gem and the minute my call play action play and Wegazin finds Mark and Michelle for an 83 yard touchdown as UMass will end up winning the game 14 to 3. And so as you see right there. And so now it's opening kickoff. And the Minutemen lost the coin toss and they're receiving. And Alan Williams takes the ball out of his end zone, goes to his right, and returns the ball for about a gain of 32. So now the first play on the UMass Minutemen drive, Wegazin is under center. He sends Blanche Lauer in motion to the left. And he, and he hikes the ball and he hands it off to Michael Cox, who runs right up the middle for a good gain of eight. And we'll most likely see the Minutemen try to establish Michael Cox as we have tried, as they have tried the previous two weeks. So now on second down two, Wegazin is under center and he hands it off to Michael Cox again, who gets about a good gain of six, and that will move the chains as it's a Minutemen first down. So now next playback, Wegazin under center drops back in the pocket and he finds nobody to pass it to. It's a fumble. Nobody's able to recover it. Ogburn picks it up, breaks a tackle, and after that, he can practically walk into the end zone. And a disaster for the Minutemen to start their day. As you see here, he just breaks a tackle. And after he made extra point, it's 7-0 San Jose State. As he's getting congratulations. So now first play back, Wegg's enhanced off to the fullback Burns for about a gain of, for a gain of one. So now third down nine, Wegazin is under center and it's an obvious passing situation. 
he drops back like from bait and pass and he gets sacked again it's not a good day for the U.S. offense as now David Fails has his first offensive as soon as he stands to the first offensive possession as David Fails just throws the ball away and they will be running the pistol offense so now David Fails hands it off to Freeman for a loss of two and now it'll be third down and 12 as the U.S. Minutemen is looking good and so now Fails in pistol formation, drops back, he has all the time in the world, and he finds Jones, but his momentum carried him back, and he did not get the first down, as you see the UMass defense is happy to make a stop, so now Wegg is, in, is under center, he hands off to Michael Cox on a counter play, and he gets about a good gain of 14 before running out of bounds, and so now Wegg is in, will hand it off to Cox again, who gets about a gain of 3, I you see the Minutemen have heavily been relying on Cox. So now second down and seven, Wegg is in his under center. And he's going, he's calling some hot routes. And he drops back looking to pass it. And he looks for somebody to pass it to. And he will try and throw it to Mark and Michelle. But he overthrows him. And so now third down and seven, Wegg is in drops back. And he finds Julian Colorado for about a gain of 10, but that will move the chain. So that will be another U Minuteman first down. So now next play back, Wegason drops back, and San Jose State spring pressure, and he does not have time to pass the ball as the UMass line does not find a match for defense. It's now on third down 20, about 20. With 29 seconds left on the clock, Wegg is into going small route. He drops back, looks for somebody to throw it to, and said he had sacked and fumbles again. But this time, luckily, uh, offensive lineman picks it up. I see Wegg's has been sacked four times this to the, the, in the first quarter only, and after a UMass punt that will end the first quarter. As it is a pretty good defensive battle, as only there's been a, as there's only been a defensive touchdown, and it's seven nothing San Jose State. So now, first play back of San Jose State's next drive was called fail. David fails. He's off to Freeman, who goes for a loss of two. So now third down nine. Fails looks back for somebody to pass it to, and Dark will break up break up that pass. That's now first play back for the UMass Minutemen. Wegazin hands it off to Cox for a gain of two. So now the next play, Wegazin goes to calls a screen. And that will go for a gain of eight. And it will be third and in inches. As you see right there. And so now third and in inches. Wegazin will hand it off to Burns, the fullback. And he barely gets the first down. And so now that's another UMass Minutemen first down. The next playback, Wegson sees that the blitzing calls some audibles, but the offensive line has no chance of stopping it. As you see, Sean Bacon already has two sacks. So now second 15, Wegson goes to pass it, and he passes it to Blanchflower fast. It's now third down four. Wegson goes for his screen. And San Jose State already had it sorted out, and he overthrew Michael Cox anyway. So now fourth down and four. Wegg is in under center, sends Mark and Michelle in motion, calls some more hot routes, and so now he will hike the ball and drop back and find try and find somebody to pass it to. But instead, he actually breaks a tackle, and he can't find anybody open. He tries to scramble. But before he could scramble, he gets sacked. So now next play back, David Fails drops back and finds Grigsby for about a good gain of 15. So now the next play, first down, Fails off back, has all the time in the world. And he finds Grigsby again for a gain of 20. As you see, San Jose State called a timeout. 
So now, UMass on the blitz, but they cannot get to David Fails, and he just finds another wide open receiver for a gain of seven. So now Fails hands it up to Freeman, who gets almost to the end zone and around the one yard line, and Fails was handed off to a fullback for another touchdown. And so now next play back in, on UMass's next drive, Blake is in trying to find somebody to pass it to, but instead he gets sacked for a loss of seven. So now Wegson drops back trying to find somebody to pass it to, and San Jose State calls the blitz again, and Wegson gets sacked for third and 24. And now Wegson drops back to pass again. A rather interesting decision by Coach Carter, and he gets picked off by Hightower, and. Uh, he gets tackled. So now first play back, fails goes an option, he gives it back to Freeman, and that goes for a loss of four. So now it's seven seconds left. The uh, San Jose State did not opt to call a timeout. Fails drops back, which made him pass it to, and that will get broken up by a defender. And so now that will bring up halftime with San Jose State leading UMass 14 nothing, which is not which was expected. And so now the first play back, Fails drops back and passes it to wide receiver as receiver for a gain of eight. So now third down four, Fails drops back, and it's a screen wide receiver screen to Grigsby, who goes for a good gain of about 25 yards. And so the next play back on first down, Fails in the pistol, hands it off to his wide to his halfback Freeman, who goes for a gain of nine on um, second and one. Fails and the pistol hands it off to Freeman again, who gets the first down on about a game of nine. And so now, next play back again, another first down. This is methodical drive by San Jose State. Fails goes for the often play. He doesn't pitch it, he tries to juke up the defender, but the defender is not buying that. It's so now third down six, UMass calling the blitz. And fails just find Jones there. It's a good catch, but he had no chance of getting the first down because of the throw. So now San Jose State will just settle for a field goal. And so halfway, and the field goal will be good. And so halfway through the third quarter, it's looking like a blowout as San Jose State is up 17 to nothing. So the next play back on UMass's drive, he hand, Wegas and hands it off to Cox, who bounces off a tackle and runs for a gain of 11, and that will move the chains, as Cox, Michael Cox is having a pretty good day. So now Wegson is back in the shotgun, looking for somebody to pass it to. And with the middle linebacker blitzing, what's called Wegson finds Cox down the middle, as there's nobody covering him except the outside linebacker. And that will go for another first down. And so, next play back, Wegson drops back, and he finds Allen Williams down the middle of the field, and that will be another first down, so maybe UMass will have their own methodical drive. And so now, first down, Wegson calling some hot routes, it's a play action, and he will try and throw it to... Bernard Davis, but a defender breaks it up. And it's now third down nine. Wegs in the shotgun. And he drops back and he throws it to Bernard Davis. And this time it is complete, but Bernard Davis is on the ground, slow to give up, slow to get up. But that will move the chains. And it'll be another UMass first down. So next play back, Wegs and drops back from under center. And looking for somebody to pass to, he scrambles. And this time he fumbles the ball, but luckily an offensive lineman recovers it again this time. As you see right here, number 31 just had Wegas in on his sights and was able to deliver a big hit, forcing a fumble. But luckily offensive lineman uh, picked the ball up. And so now on second and five, Wegas in the shotgun, following some hot routes, and he will be looking for somebody to pass it to and he throws it behind Mark and Michelle and so now this time third down five 
Wedge in turn finds somebody to pass it to. And he finds Mark and Michelle, and this time he passes on target. And so now it'll be UMass touchdown with uh, four minutes and like 40 seconds left in the fourth quarter as they will try and put back a little comeback as you see there Mark and Michelle getting his congratulations as UMass had a pretty good drive. So now first play back, David fails, drops back to pass on play action. UMass sang the blitz and he passes it. And Perry McIntyre gets between the ball and the wide receiver, and he will pick it off. And now you could feel the momentum going in UMass's way. As you see in the replay, McIntyre just picks the ball off. So now first play back, Weggs and hands it off to Cox on a misdirection. He goes for a gain of four. As you see there in the replay, and a big hit by number 31 again. And so now, next play, Wegson's under center, calling some hot routes. Mm. And as you see, Bernard, Dion, Dion Walker is struggling hearing it in this loud San Jose State crowd. And so now, Wegson hikes the ball, drops back, looking for somebody to pass it to. And he finds Mark and Michelle for a good gain of 15. As you see, Wegson's having an okay game, gaining his confidence back. So now, next play back, Wegson drops back to pass, but it's actually a draw play to Michael Cox. He goes for a good gain of almost 20 yards. As you see, Wegson, Michael Cox is having a good game. So now, the next play, uh, Wegson sends Julian Coloroso in motion, and he will hand the ball off to Williams for a halfback stretch, who gets about a gain of four. And so now, in second and goal, Wegson has a screenplay, and he tries to throw it to Williams, who could have had a chance to run up the field and score a touchdown, but he overthrows him. As you see here, Michigan State pulled off an upset over Notre Dame. And so now, in third and goal, Wegson calling some hot routes, and he drops back and may pass it to, and he will find Blanche Flower. And it will be just short. So now, Coach Carter's had to be a risky decision and go for it on fourth down. And Wegison will hand it off to his fullback, Davis. And that will, I mean, Burns. And that will be, uh, and that will, he will punch it in. And so now, UMass is only down three points with two minutes and 17 seconds left. So their defense needs to stop it. And the first play back on San Jose State. They go for a game of eight. And so Coach Card likes not to get a call timeout because they always get a first down instantly. So now the next play after the first down, UMass wastes their timeout. And so Freeman on second down gets about gets game of eight. And UMass is all out of timeouts. And it's third down in inches. And Fails hands it out to Freeman who gets about a gain of four. And that practically sums it up, and after this cube and San Jose State's in victory formation, as a David Fails takes a kneel, and that will practically sum it up as UMass had a momentum going to the fourth quarter, momentum in the fourth quarter, but they weren't able to pull off the upset, and so as you see here, it was San Jose State all early then fourth quarter. UMass uh, won in the fourth quarter practically. So as you see here, Wegson threw for 9-17 for 107 yards. One touchdown, one interception. And David Fails with 7 for 11 for 97 yards. In the rushing game, Wegson got sacked a lot. And Michael Cox got 8 rushes for 62 yards. And so receiving what's called Mark Michelle only got two catches this game and he only got held to 18 yards and on defense his stats Perry McIntyre had a good game with an interception of five tackles Christian Burt had another good game with five tackles and tackle for a loss and so now um, I'm back to my regular voice guys and so as you see UMass was almost able to pull off an upset and now, if I told you, as I told you in the beginning, as you see here, it just shows that Adam and Toya uh, committed again. 
I lost most of the gameplay for this. So I'm going to show you the gameplay I have right here. It is triple overtime right now. As uh, it's 3rd and 11. And Wegman tries to find somebody to pass it to. And he just barely misses uh, Tajay Sharp, I believe. And so now 4th and 11. Wegman tries to find somebody to pass it to. And he finds a wide open Alan Williams who just drops the ball and that will be the end of the game as the UMass Minutemen lose in triple overtime 37-34. As you see here is a scoring summary. As you see Miami got one field goal while we weren't able to score. And that practically and so Miami, Ohio got the win. I see here Wegg is in 17-34 for 366 yards, 4 touchdowns, and 3 interceptions. Mark and Michelle at 4 receptions for 125 yards and 2 touchdowns. Michael Cox got 15 attempts for 39 yards. Lynch, Dion Walker also had a big game as 3 receptions for 125 yards also. Lynch Flower had 3 receptions for 28 yards. And as you see here, Perry McIntyre got eight tackles. Dallin got an interception. Christian Berg got two interceptions. And Tharp got two interceptions. And also, I forgot to... Now, and so that has to be all for the end of the episode. And come back next episode as we verse Miami, Ohio. And sorry for black screen. Anyway, so that will be all.